2001 A Space Odyssey was released in 1968 by director Stanley Kubrick. A review from Sounding App Film comments on the innovative use of sound in this film, especially for Kubrick's use of a score of only pre-existing music. When analyzing sound in a film, it is important to consider the function of the sound, the source of the sound, and the different types of sound. One of the main functions of sound, according to Barsam and Monaghan, is to directly communicate through dialogue and narration. 2001 A Space Odyssey does not rely on dialogue in the way that most movies do. In fact, most of the dialogue serves only to confirm what the audience can already see and understand. But it is important to not confuse this into thinking that it is a silent film, because it certainly is not. Another function of sound that is notable in this film is the function of raising viewer expectations. One unique way that we see 2001 A Space Odyssey raise viewer expectations with sound is by using silence as a narrative device. We see this with Frank's death scene, even though we do not see how Kill Frank, the complete and sudden silence allows the audience to understand what has happened. Understanding the different sources of sound is also important. In 2001 A Space Odyssey, most of the sound is non-diegetic, meaning that it exists only for the audience. The entire score of the movie is an example of this. The only diegetic sounds, or sounds that exist in the world of the story, according to Barsam and Monaghan, are the dialogue between the characters. The film score is also an example of an off-screen source, since it comes from a place we don't see. In contrast, the dialogue would be an on-screen source. Some different types of sound present in 2001 A Space Odyssey are live sound, remote sound, and sound effects. An example of live sound in this film would be the actual dialogue that is being spoken and recorded live. An example of remote sound would be the breathing sounds that were actually recorded offset by Kubrick with a motorcycle helmet on. This type of a remote sound is also considered a sound effect, since it is a sound that was artificially created for the soundtrack with some specific function in the story. Another example of sound effects in 2001 A Space Odyssey are the wild sounds of the apes used in the film's opening scene. They were all recorded live in a separate environment and then edited into the film. The soundtrack in 2001 A Space Odyssey is not traditional by any means. One reason of this is that the musical score has no firm dramatic linkage to the visual action on screen. Kubrick's use of a score full of pre-existing musical pieces was also a bold move, especially since Kubrick commissioned composer Alex North to create a score and then famously did not use it. In a film review by Paul Burns in the Sydney Morning Herald, it is discussed that Kubrick didn't need music to supply emotion to intensify an image in a way that most films did because his images were already strong enough by themselves. Another interesting use of sound in this film is that the entire character of Hal exists as a soundtrack alone, and yet the emotion we see from him somehow almost exceeds what we see from the other characters and actors on screen. In Hal's final death scene, we hear his voice entirely transform when he begins to beg for his life. This representation of the fear Hal experiences when faced with death shows us that he is in fact sentient and capable of human emotion. One movie often compared to 2001 A Space Odyssey is Alien, the sci-fi thriller directed by Ridley Scott in 1979. Alien was directly influenced by 2001 A Space Odyssey in a few different ways. One is a computer bay called Mother, like Hal, but instead of blood red, Mother is a warm amber color. Alien is also influenced by 2001 A Space Odyssey because of its believable space gear and detailed equipment, much like that in Kubrick's film. Alien is just one example of the numerous films that 2001 A Space Odyssey has inspired and continues to inspire. 2001 A Space Odyssey will always be remembered for the way that it radically redefined how audiences and critics understand sound in a film.